Hey there, I did a video a while ago um, for the Apex music for one of the characters, Fuse. It was very guitar heavy. And um, I got a request, um, some requests to do the same thing for the character Mad Maggie, which also is very guitar heavy for the, for the cues for that character. Um, I'm going to start with the main theme and uh, just talk about some of the things I did. Uh, some of the stuff that I'm going to show you may or may not have gotten used. I've been listening to the music from it, you know, the final mixes, and I'm not sure exactly what's there. Um, Stephen Barton, the great composer that composes all the music for Apex, he wants, he tells me, be a mad scientist. You know, play the stuff that he, he writes out, like the bass lines and the guitar parts and things like that. But then I'll layer a bunch of different layers on top of that. So I'm going to show you some of those layers. And they often don't sound like guitar. That's part of the, the fun in it for me is to create these sounds that start with the guitar but get manipulated by effects. And I'm going to show you how I do some of those. So um, the first thing, the main thing... basically what I got. Here's the bass part I did for it. Here's, I have two different bass parts here. Um, one is called Bright Pick Clean Punk Bass. And I'll, I'll do, I used a guitar rig for this. Um, I'll do a screenshot of this so you can have, have a, a copy of that. And then I put just a little bit of Valhalla reverb. So let me, let me uh, play this. Here's the bass. all my volume knobs and tone knobs up on my bass um, when I'm playing. Let's see. Uh, and then I did a dark one. So this is what this one sounds like. Let me solo it. Let me get rid of that clip. Oh. And he sends me the MIDI for the, like, for the bass part. Um, that looks like this. Um, and... I can easily turn that, if I go uh, Command 3, I can turn that into music notation if I need to. That's just the same part over and over again. I still, I still probably printed it up, <laughs> if I know me. But, you know, when I print it up, I often don't know if it's going to change until I get my eyes on it. So, um, and then uh, I did another take where I used a more dark and I played with my fingers. And that one sounds like this. Well, the sound is, sounds like this. That's a, that's a little bit more human, a little bit more dark, fleshy, okay? Now, so then the next thing that happens, I'm going to leave both of those in, though. Next thing that happens is what I, it was a guitar part that he wrote out, I think. Is that what this is? Yeah. Oh, you know what? There's two guitar parts. So I, I played this one. Let's see. Let me solo this one. Okay, so that is guitar rig. Um, but guitar rig is it's just a it's just a clean amp. I'm not really using um, I'll play that this sound here. If that's in the original in the final mix or not, but that this amp setting in um, guitar rig is very very clean. So what I've added is this pedal here, this dirt, and if I turn this off, you can see how much cleaner it gets. Almost perfectly clean. I've got some plate reverb on here too. So the, the, that gainy, that nastiness is coming from this pedal, this uh, effect called dirt. Turn that down a little bit. So I'm not sure how much of that is getting in there, but this 
did get in there. And this is the same kind of sound. Kind of, just kind of a fuzz, almost like a out of control fuzz. And he wrote out a part for this. And it's basically, let's see. No, that's up here in this MIDI. Um, pick up yeah so that's that's that sound and I think I went get kind of a let, let the notes ring out against each other when you have distortion and you play like a second you can really hear it flutter it's even more so when you play a minor second uh, but the A to B is a major second makes the overtones work against each other and creates kind of almost these kind of miniature clusters in a way. Um, okay, so that's dirt and that's also native instruments. The same people that made um, guitar rig made dirt. Um, let's see, and then it goes. There's some swells down here. I don't think those may, well, you know, I, I can never tell. In the final mix, he may use some of this stuff, but let's, let's listen to what I did here. This is called Bloom Swell. What, this, what is this? That's a great sound. And he wrote out these chords. That's probably my squire. It's such a great sound. It's also a guitar rig, but just a AC30 clone. And then I'm using a Valhalla Uber mod. And I've just dialed in something. Basically, big bloom reverb in the Uber mod, um, but I'm sure I made adjustments to it. Usually, when you drop in a reverb, it automatically drops in at 100%. Because you, they're usually thinking you're gonna, you're putting a reverb in a bus, but I'm actually putting it on the channel um, when I do it because I don't want, <laughs> obviously I don't want all these reverbs on every instrument. I just want it on the one I'm playing. So I put it, put it on the track. So let's see. Let me, uh, let me pull. Yeah, that's a great reverb sound. Very, very effective, which is exactly what I was going for. I'm basically playing uh, B E B. It's kind of a second and uh, second inversion minor chord, E minor, but kind of C major seven, D six, and then back to to a B five. And like I said, I probably use the Squire. I really like the Squire because it has really low output. You get a really glassy sound out of it. I think I paid literally $99 for this and I use it all the time. Um, I've bought several of them over the years. Okay, so then it, it of course, is going to get big at the end here. It's... Oh, wait, I forgot to show you the filtered swells. Let's listen to these. I don't know that these made it, but... This filter on this, and I'm swelling with the volume pedal. So the way. So it's called a, it's called a swell. You're swelling in the sound. So you pluck it with the volume off, and then you rock. You you rock. You have the uh, pe the volume pedal, and you rock it from heel to toe, and it brings the volume up. It's like a volume pedal for, or volume knob for your foot. And um, and that way I can see. Look, I can no sound, but I hit that E chord and then like that, and you don't ever hear the 
you don't ever hear the attack of the pick on the strings, so it doesn't ever sound like a guitar. If I were to hit it with the volume on, it's definitely a guitar. But you can hear all the echoes and the modulations happening there. And that's a logic delay. Um, that's, that's, um, that's called de delay designer in logic. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm using, it says skipping bands, so I'm probably, that's probably a standard plugin. It's probably a, a setting. That, it's a cool sound. Like I said, I don't even know if it made it. Um, I have a bunch of sounds like that down here. Dark and filtered, what's this one? section here and you can see <laughs> I'll do a screenshot you can see I have a lot of a lot of guitar sounds here uh, so what do I have I have wide chord buzz so let's just I'm gonna go ahead and just solo each one of these and we can kind of get a sense of what they are so I and so some of these got used some didn't I'm, I basically gave Stephen lots of options So you can see this is kind of a buzzy power chord. Okay, so that's kind of a buzzy power chord. This one's much more of a, like a, a kind of a metal sound. Wide stereo. And I did the same sound, but I drove it. Instead of hitting footballs or whole notes, boom, you know, I went. Sixteenth notes and kind of match them. Okay, the next sound. Oh, this one is white power modulated. Now, this is a case where I may have taken that uh, football one, the one with the whole notes. This one, and just copy that file into a new sound. Um, I don't need to replay it every time. I just need to create lots of options. And that's using a, an effect called Step Effects that's also part of, it comes with logic. I um, mean, you can see it's got all these modulation things. I can send a screenshot of that. Um, that may be just the, the default. I don't think so, though. I, I, I'm sure I made adjustments to it. Uh, what's this one? Broken heart fuzz. So this is definitely a fuzzy sound. I did it with bass. So I played the bass with that sound. <laughs> it should be called broken fart. Okay, and I did the same thing, but right. So one of the things you could do um, when you want to generate some energy is you can take any note you're playing on bass and get in this case I can play like an E note. I think that's what's going on there. Yeah. So if I were to. But if I want to generate some energy, okay, I could go. Just slide up an octave. Kind of like it's almost like here we go. <laughs> That's kind of what the emotion that it, it generates. Uh, what else do I have here? Uh, so I've got a lot of bases here. I've got bright. We hear this one. It's, 
interesting. I did I did three different takes of this sound. I did um, bright pick bass. So I'm using a pick. But it kept it very, very kept it very, very simple. And then I did a bright pick bass busier. Pick bass busiest. So this one. This might go up that octave. Some 16 notes in there. So I've also got more distorted guitars. There's just a lot of guitars in here. Now again, I, he didn't use them all. I even called this one Chords with Attitude. And then I did this sound with the lead line. Doubled that synth melody with that guitar. I'm not sure again. I don't know if that one made it in there. Um, but anyway, so there's what I did for the main theme. Um, let's open up the uh, lobby music because that one had some guitar acoustic guitars in it and my my 12 string mandolin. So let's check that one out. Okay, everybody really, really likes this music. And what's interesting about this is that um, the original notes I got for this were that they wanted to kind of get that Nirvana la, uh, unplugged sound, um, like when Nirvana did that MTV unplugged record. And the funny thing is, is I, I watched, I kind of just to remind myself, I pulled it up and I go, oh, Kurt's actually plugged in, so technically he's not unplugged, he's playing an acoustic with a pickup. So I, I used my Gibson Dove, um, hold on, let me get that. So I used this guitar because it has a pickup in it. Um, I, most of my acoustics don't have pickups because I'm mostly just working in the studio. But every now and then you want that plugged in guitar sound, and so that's what we did here. Um, and there's several different guitars. Um, I, have, I have written here, Acoustic guitar, Arpeggio 1 left, Arpeggio 2 left, Arpeggio 1 right, Arpeggio 2 right, and an acoustic strummed left and right. Um, and some, oh I see, the, 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 it's just staggered. I, I wanted to let one ring out while the other one started playing, so that's why I did those two. Okay. Um, in fact, I'll do a screenshot so you can see how it's laid out. So you... You, you shouldn't notice that the guitars, um, it's, that it's different recordings, but, so here's... So, so there's two things going on. It's kind of a strong thing. So let me solo those, left and right. the voicing I used for this driving eighth note part of the intro for the um, lobby music and um, it's basically B minor and then G A um, and the way I voiced these chords 
I kind of like, it's kind of like a power chord, but with thirds. Like you might... Um, the thing about power chords, you have a root and a fifth, there's no um, third there, so you don't really know if it's a major chord or a minor chord. It can be... Right? It could be that. Um, but with the way I'm voicing it, I'm playing a root, a third, and a third up an octave. And I could even move that top note around if I wanted to. And almost all guitar players do this, where they do that 16th note um, shuffle right before changing chords to kind of hide the... to do it but it kind of hides that moment where you can't you're going from one chord to another um, okay the other guitar what did I do there and that, it, again it was doubled so there's left and right oh no here we go sorry and, and when you double something it just makes it wider it just look it sounds bigger um, basically what I'm doing there is I think what Stephen wrote. No, I'm using a pick. <laughs> I forget how I did it. Okay, so basically what I did here was I uh, played my B minor chord kind of up here at the 7th fret. The, um, the last four, B, uh, four eighth notes of the second measure and the fourth measure are D string in the bass. So get it down again it's so funny because I remember having to work it out and figure it out so all right um, what else did I do there's uh, oh oh this was cool so the melody I played on 12 string mandolin oh later okay so let's listen I'm gonna just solo all of these guitars so we can hear, hear them all together <laughs> So I, I have this gold tone 12 string mandolin that I used on it. It's an 11 string right now because I just broke the top string tuning up, uh, which is not unusual. Uh, pretty, pretty tight strings on this. Um, so basically what I did was I, I got that B string to kind of drone out. harmony or something there. So I'm just kind of playing a, a, a power chord 
B's and F sharp. One F sharp, not two, because I broke a string. <laughs> okay, let's listen to all of this. Once the the twelve string mandolin comes in. Uh, Some, I also doubled that melody. Let's see, it actually has a guitar melody written out here. So it's basically that melody. Um, I can play it on acoustic. This. It's a really great melody. Simple as that, though. Um, pentatonic almost. So. That I, I did with three different guitars here, and I think he chose, so I did one that was, it's called Black Sun Garden, so it's kind of like a sound garden sound. So let's listen to that. our normal plug-in for guitar rig number five I think it's uh, guitar rig five I think it's just black sun garden I probably adjusted some rates of things or made it uh, but I'll do a screenshot of this so you can see that so this one I could I call Niles Rogers and um, it's basically a very clean sound a little compression a little bit of delay and that may have gotten used, it's a little buzzy because I'm using this Squire and it's just a super cheap guitar with cheap pickups and they kind of buzz. Um, but that's not usually a problem in the grand scheme of things. I think he used this one. Same, probably the same guitar. Very clean, lots of delay, some reverb, and that may be the melody there. Now there's another sound going on here that I, I know he used, I heard it. Uh, it's a, a dotted eighth kind of thing. Um, I hear it more down here. It's a great sound. Yeah, it's, that's basically, um, it's got reverb on there, there's delay on there. The delay is basically just dotted eights. One of the tricks is to make, it's a stereo delay, but I'm, both, both sides are set to a, a dotted eighth. But then I, I, I make one about 3% larger. So it creates a wider sound. Um, and I'm doing that kind of stuff. finding my way there. I don't think it really gets kicked in until about here. He may have just sampled one section of it. I think it's right in here that he uses. But basically what I'm doing, I'm adding to it, to the signal path, I'm adding a auto wad, kind of a cheap Ibanez auto wad. So the harder I pluck, the more sound you get. It just automatically opens up the wah sound. So that's kind of what's going on there. I've got a bunch of stuff here too. Swell. Chords. 
parts that were written out. Fuzzy tone. I, I don't know if he, I don't know how much this guy means. show you that bass six you got to see this I don't know if it was intended to be a six string bass or if it was supposed to be an octave guitar <laughs> but basically it, you can play it just like a guitar that's a G chord that's a D chord that's a C chord uh, the only thing is everything's down an octave I like this sound it's it's just got a really good kind of thwacky sound I always kind of liken it to um, the sound if you plucked a piano string oh I've got the auto one on <laughs> Uh, and so the bass part there, I have written out here. What is it? Um, boom, boom, doo, doo. great sound to it. Let me pull up the sound a little bit here. You can hear it. And I can change, I, because it's got the Jaguar electronics, it's got a lot of options. Um, I want even thinner sound. I can, I don't even know what that does. Um, that's just this pickup, the middle pickup, the bridge pickup. But I like the two outside pickups on. kind of my favorite sound. Again, my volume and tone are all the way up. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll play bass on a song and then I'll double it with this. Um, it'll just give it just a certain something and you don't have to put it even. You can put it way back in the back, but um, it will it give that bass a little bit more of a bright sound. So, so that is all the parts to lobby. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and I may do more of these as we uh, as we go. I've, I've been playing guitars and basses on all of the Apex stuff, um, so I could probably go back a couple years easily enough. So anyway, God bless you. Take care.